Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here once again, and today we are bringing you Baseball Stars, released by SNK. Well, this game first came out as an arcade game, and was hugely popular in the North America region. And it had a pretty good run in Japan as well. So, it was later ported to the NES in 1989, and once again, it was developed and published by SNK. Now, this game has a really strong lineage, and still tops a lot of lists for both the NES and for sports games of all time. It's really popular and really beloved. This game had a lot of features that were really new for the time, and actually, haven't been seen a lot since. In a lot of ways, it was really a trailblazer. Graphically, this game is very kind of middle of the road for us, which makes sense because it came out in 89, and that's the middle of the road for the baseball games on the NES. Now, SNK really seemed to put a lot of upfront work into the presentation of the, the menus and the avatars. I mean, look at how detailed and colorful they all are. Get to the game. Yes, the players and fielders all look pretty, you know, they're pretty detailed. Their bodies and everything, they look like regular people but their uniforms are all kind of bland. Really, it didn't bother us. It's a baseball game, so we were fine with it. All right, so the control, it's still an early baseball game. So yes, it still has that muddy feel when you're trying to run bases or you know, you're know you controlling your fielders. However, I did enjoy this control much more than some of the previous titles we've done. Now, Jim didn't like it as much, probably because he lost bad to me, but whatever. Anyway, the thing I did enjoy is that they got rid of that terrible grid-based control, and they kind of just zoomed in to whichever fielder was closest, and you controlled him freely. I liked that better. Jim didn't, so, eh. Other than that, though, you had full control of your pitches, as always, and your batters, so. It's middle of the road between me and Jim's score. Alright, like Jim said, this game truly is a trailblazer. Let's start with number one. First baseball game to have battery backup. Now the reason you need this is you can create a team, take it through a season, and it would save all your stats. You can customize the shit out of these teams. So one thing is each player has prestige. The higher amount of prestige, the more money you get. The more money you get, the more you can upgrade your players and your teams themselves. Now there's 11 different areas for your pitchers to upgrade, and I believe there's seven or eight areas for your batters. Um, we personally didn't go through the season, but I mean, I touched upon it, and it was it was just insane the amount of options you could do. You could waste many hours playing this game. So another first, and this is for you ladies out there. Yeah, there's no ladies listening to this. Anyway, if you want to play as girls, you can put some money and play as girls. First baseball game to ever do that. So there's not much more to say. This game is way ahead of its time. You had female players, an RPG element, and your battery backup to save all your stats. You're not going to find a more original baseball game for the time. The sound overall is pretty damn good, and I actually liked it just a little bit more than Brian did. The song on the start screen, it's nice and upbeat and catchy, but it only lasts for about 10 seconds. So, while it's good, hopefully you won't have to listen to it too long before someone hits the start button. Besides that though, there's a lot of music and different music throughout each menu screen and even during the course of the game. They put a lot of time into it and it shows. Oh, the gameplay. There is a lot to talk about here. Alright, first and foremost, you get a bunch of different game modes. So you have the league play, which is your pretty much your standard season mode, and you can adjust the number of games that you play in it, maxing out at 125. So you have almost a full baseball season. Besides that, you have your standard, you know, one player mode, two player mode, and computer mode, which is just watching the game. Once again, I never saw the appeal on that, but hey, maybe if you're bored and want to watch some baseball action, why not? Another part of the game really is the created team mode. So it can start you off with a bunch of uh, presets, you know, teams that are better at hitting, more powerful, some that are better at pitching, some that are just made of all-around veterans and stuff like that. So you get a lot of options, and as far as replayability goes, uh, this will be short. If you've made it this long to review, then you've heard about all the stuff you can do, all the teams you can create, all the stats you can make your own. There's just so much variation in this game and personalization that, I mean, you can infinitely change up how the game plays. So, no choice but to give it tens there. So overall, this is a good game. Now, it's not great. We gave it a six overall, and you can see our breakdown. We respect the shit out of the fact that it's a trailblazer, it's original, you have tons of replayability. 
But we didn't see the mass appeal of that. You know, some sites even had this, like, ranked number 23 in our top 100 NES games. We just didn't see it. And, you know, realistically, a 6 is one of the higher scores we're going to give a baseball game for the NES. So, if you happen to pass by it and you can get it for cheap, definitely pick it up. It's worth a try. While playing this game, we enjoyed some Murphy's Irish Red Ale. And remember to drink your beers and play your games responsibly. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, if you enjoyed, click like or share our video or subscribe. We'll see you next week.